Yo, what's going on people? It's your boy Ape Honcho, back at you again with another video. So guys, it looks like the Unknown T trial has officially been wrapped up. Now before you guys ask, yes, sentencing was still to happen for the other two defendants that were on trial with Unknown T, and I was waiting for them to get sentenced to make an update video on it. Now for you guys that have been watching my channel for the past couple of months, then you'll know that I covered the trial in depth. And if you want to know more about it, I will leave all the trial coverage linked down in the description because there, we break down everything that was reported in the unknown t trial but to summarize on new year's eve of 2017 going into 2018 unknown t alongside romani borland and mohammed muse had attended a party uninvited and they snuck their way in upon entering the party it seemed that muse had been harassing girls and then after bumping into university student steven navarro jara a fight had broken out in which steven had went on to lose his life of course as the majority of you will know unknown t did in fact beat the case but Borland and Musi didn't. So, on the 2nd of January 2020, Romani Borland, after being found not guilty on a murder charge, was given a 10-year jail sentence after he was found guilty of manslaughter. Before he was sentenced, Stephen's dad went on to say that Steve was a happy and fun young man. He went on to say, we raised him to be a polite and decent person, and he was well loved by his family. As the eldest, he was a role model for the other children. He was a lovely young man. His dream was to be a pilot, and he was studying at the University of Harvard. Hertfordshire. His ambition was to join the RAF so he could defend the country of his birth. Jalen Borland for 10 years, Judge Mark Dennis QC went on to say, the evidence reveals the deceased was struck by a number of people in a short-lived but sustained attack involving at least three individuals. The defendant's active participation consisted of using a piece of wood to strike the deceased several times. As the sentence was passed, relatives of Romani Borland had to be removed from the public gallery after they had screamed at the judge what the f this place is going to burn take off your wig you're all going to burn you will burn in the lakes of fire then last monday on the 18th of may 2020 mohammed muse was sentenced to two years in jail which was suspended for two years and was ordered to carry out 250 hours of unpaid work and had to attend 10 days rehabilitation the judge had told muse the violent event on the 1st of january 2018 was shocking you bear responsibility for starting trouble which transformed an otherwise peaceful and enjoyable party into extreme and wholly unjustified violence i'm sentencing you on the basis that your participation was limited to the very outset of the disorder it was reported that muse had appeared expressionless as he was let off with the suspended sentence. Now again, if you are confused and don't know the story of what happened, I did cover the trial in detail where everything was explained, including key points, so I suggest that you go and check that out, it will be linked down in the description. Which moves us on to our next story and it seems like a 9 year old boy has had to have his leg amputated after he was hit by a motorbike. It's being reported that emergency services had rushed to Rosmead Park near South Coast Lane and Hall at 12pm on the 25th of May 2020 after a boy had been hit by an off-road motorbike. The man riding the bike was said to have been topless, not wearing a helmet and didn't stop after hitting the child. And Hall Live has officially reported that the boy had to have his leg amputated as a result of the collision. Fortunately for the boy and his family though, three hours later at 3pm, a man was charged with a number of offences relating to the crash. Jerome Corkwell, aged 24, has gone on to be charged with causing serious injury by dangerous driving, failing to stop after the incident, driving without a license, using a vehicle without insurance, and using a vehicle not in efficient working order. He's currently remanded into police custody and will appear at Hall Magistrates Court tomorrow on Wednesday, May 27th, 2020. Now, fortunately for this nine-year-old boy, he didn't lose his life in this situation, but it's pretty sad now that for the rest of his life, he's only going to have one fully functioning leg. Now, of course, as you get older, it gets a lot easier, but seeing as he's gone nine years with using his legs and then all of a sudden going on to lose one in a horrific accident, it's going to be a pretty hard thing to deal with. And again, this is another case of stupid people doing stupid things with motorbikes. And guys, just remember, Remember that if you are riding a motorbike, please use them correctly for your own safety and for the safety of others. Like this guy wasn't even wearing a helmet or any protective gear and to top it all off, although yes, he was riding an off-road motorbike, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can ride it down park pathways where there's literally children and people which will more than likely get in the way. Now imagine if this had been a three-year-old, it more than likely would have ended up deadly and the child would have likely gone on to lose their life. 
But moving on to our last story, and that's an update in the Chad Gordon situation. Now, I just want to give a shout out to Crime Scene Images London. You guys should definitely go and check his channel out. He goes to different crime scenes and films at the police cordons. So if you're ever looking for footage from a crime scene, you should definitely go and subscribe to his channel. I'll leave that link down in the description. So for you guys who didn't know, I have covered this story, but to summarize, a man who had suffered from autism, known as Chad Gordon, had opened his door just before 9 p.m. on the 18th of May 20. 2020 when he was faced with two gunmen who opened fire on him in a case of mistaken identity and he went on to lose his life. Well, one week on, it seems like no arrests have still been made and police are appealing for the public's help to catch the killers. They are keen to speak to anyone who can provide information about the events surrounding the disposal of a moped used by the killers after the murder. Detective Chief Inspector Andy Partridge, who is leading the investigation, said, we know that Chad's killers used the scooter to flee the scene of the murder and that around 30 minutes later, it was left in Tottenham marshes and set on fire. That was Monday 18th of May 2020 just before 9pm. It was a warm evening and the area was busy with people enjoying the good weather. The area is popular with dog walkers and cyclists alike and therefore a lot of people were present around that time. A scooter being set alight would have stood out. We know two black males aged in their late teens or early 20s were seen to leave the location where the moped was on fire. They made off on foot and headed towards the green bridge a short distance away. So that wraps up the three stories and as always in regards to the motorbike situation and the Chad Gordon situation as always I'll keep you guys updated. But let me know what you guys think this in the comment section below give the video a little like and if you want the latest drill street and music news out of the uk be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell it's been your boy eight poncho and i'm out